Welcome to the first of a series of videos telling you about certified refrigerant services here in Punta Gorda, Florida. We're going to take a look at uh, the receiving in our laboratory here and give you an insight of what goes on. So come with me and let's take a look. Our production area here. Let's just take a quick pan around before we go over to the lab. Well, here we are in the shop, and of course, uh, this gentleman right here is one of our, our guys here at CRS. And it's Trey, right? Yep, yep, Trey. Trey, tell us, uh, what is this area here, and what do you do? Uh, it's basically the receiving area for CRS. Just check in the cylinders, get them weighed in, do a pre-test on them, get a general idea of what's actually in the cylinders, so we can separate them out, get them with the tanks that we go with. Okay. And these cylinders that you have in here, are these, uh, uh, they have good functional in them? It means that the purity is high enough where we can actually put them into resell later. And that's part. The, the, they're going to go right into uh, to uh, reclaim that tank, right? Yes, sir. That's what this bench is over here. It's a big okay. reclaim bench, so we can do it fast. We can get 12 cylinders on here at a time. Okay. We can get them stuff down, get it back to the customers. So it's a very fast, high speed piece of equipment. Then. Yeah, we can do about 12 cylinders in about 15 minutes. That's great. That's great. Okay. And you can also do the yeah. all size cylinders. Yes, sir. We got, we got a hookup for, we only do about 125s, a couple of half tons over here at the most. We have larger machines to take care of them. They pay a higher volume of half tons that have That's correct. So, if, if, a, if someone, a contractor, they bring their, they, we pick up their cylinders and bring them here, how, how do they, how do you keep track of that? Well, we got different transfer sheets, stuff like that. We got, um, every company got its own, has its own sheet that comes in, right down the tear weight and stuff like that. And the actual weights of the cylinders and the percentages are. And we separate them all out and then we just transfer them in. I see. Okay, so all that information that you collect here, that's what goes over to the office then for them to keep track of all the cylinders and their gas and, and what uh, belongs to that contractor. Expiration dates on the cylinders as well. That brings up another question. You just mentioned expiration date. You check the, the expiration date on every cylinder and if it's out of certification, then what happens then if that cylinder's out of certification? Well, they get a blue dot here, mm -hmm. they go over to the, uh, the rebuild department and they get hydroed out so we can get a retest and so they can be recertified. That's what they can be reviewed. Okay. Well, you just answered all my questions. We'll probably go into the lab now and see what goes on over there. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Here we are outside the laboratory, so let's go inside and find out what they do inside with the gas chromatography. Dylan. Hi, how are you? Hey, good, good to see you. Hey, this is Dylan. He's our lab technician here at CRS. And he's gonna he's gonna tell us what he does in here and what all this stuff does. So tell me, Dylan, um, this lab is basically to do what? What do you do in here? Um, so the basic premise of this is a more in-depth look at uh, the testing uh, that of each cylinder that comes in here. This machine right here is actually a SRI machine, which tests low pressure gases, uh, R11, R123, R113, uh, which we also have another SRI machine, but it's for a different purpose. Okay. Um, but this we pour a small sample of each, which tells us basically the purity uh, of R11 and R123 and R113. Cool. So it, it tells you what the composition of that sample is, and, and it shows you on the screen here? Exactly, yeah. It will give us a basically uh, a Richter scale kind of look of okay. each thing, which basically shows us spikes of the main purity, which the bigger spikes actually equal a higher purity gas. Mm -hmm. And it will have a printout at the end of each test to show us the exact purity of each gas that's in the sample. Now, what do you do with that printout once you have that report? Uh, we will return that into our secretary over there, and we will attach it to a folder that will uh, be attached also with whatever we checked it in with, which is what Trey checked it in. That's I see. Okay. So this is a you, you mentioned this is for low pressure refrigerants. Okay. What do the others do? What about this one over here? Uh, as we move over to this other SRI machine, this is a NOS machine, which actually tells us the air in all of our necessarily certified tanks, which is our EPA certification. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Now, this system here, you know, we use this one primarily for high pressure gases, which would include uh, 22, uh, 134, 410, yes, 12. basically it's, uh, so everybody has a key indicator as to the air on top of the cylinders and okay. everything that we run in CRS, basically. Okay. And in this case here, you mentioned you pour a sample or inject a sample into this system right. over here because it's high pressure gas. How do you handle that? Uh, we actually inject a sample. We'll actually fill this, what we call a weenie. Uh, with a vapor sample, and okay. we'll charge this to about 20 psi, and it will give us a readout just from that. I see. How long does it take a test to to finish? How long does it take to test the sample over here? Uh, low pressure, it takes uh, about an hour and a half wow. for the lower pressure ones because it is a longer process. It has a lot more things to calculate. Mm -hmm. uh, the air sample only takes about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. Now we've got another system over here. I noticed that. These systems here, they use computers over here right. as a host. And but, uh, this system over here is much smaller and looks totally different than those two. Tell me about this. What's this over here? Uh, this is our variant. It runs high pressure samples, not low pressure. So we're moving on to our basic in-depth check-in. We have a sniffer outside that basically checks in every tank that we get. Uh, then we come in here to get a more in-depth look, I guess you could say, at the sample and what exactly is the contaminants in that sample. Okay. And, it, and again, this is where you, you view this information when the test is run, correct? Yes, this is the actual spike again once as you look at it and it only takes seven or eight minutes as opposed to an hour and a half or 15. This one cuts all that time down basically into seven or eight minutes. Mm -hmm. Now I understand this is quite an expensive piece of equipment here. I believe the variant 4900 right there, I think that thing costs about $40,000, doesn't it? That's correct, yes. It's expensive. That's Compared right. to the others, they they still are expensive, but not as expensive as this equipment. So right. There's probably about $100,000 of test equipment in this little space here. Now, we noticed that we, you called that flash tube over there, the weenie, what do you call this? What's this? Uh, it's basically the same thing. It is also just taking, what it's doing is uh, we have a liquid sample that we enter into here. And, and it flashes. It, in and there. it flashes into a vapor, which obviously this little line that you see here, it takes a sample off of that vapor sample, which we keep at about 20 psi also, and try to enter that sample into this variant where it calculates exactly the purity of each tank that we enter in. Yeah. Interesting stuff, interesting stuff. And you get the same printout kind of situation here. Do you have one of those printouts that we can take a look at? Uh, I sure do. Yes. Sure right there. Okay. Tell you what, let's let's walk right over here, and uh, maybe you can hold that up and uh, bring it right on up close to the camera here. The, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's a new it's a numeric. Um, what would you say? Uh, uh, numeric um, say, I guess composition of all the... Right, the what it, basically what it does is each gas has a retention time that it comes in at. Okay. So each gas is represented by a certain retention time. As 22 opposes, which is what we see a lot of, uh, this 870 number, or 872 as it comes in here, you can see it's at 99.6, which 99.5 or better is there anything that we add, we pass as good certification, mm -hmm. good R22 basically. anything. 99.5 or better is our purity that we want. So as you can see, each each one has a retention time that each gas uh, corresponds with that we read basically every time. Uh, so in this case, as I said, it's 870 is this R22. All right, so very detailed information. And this information is available to the, 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 the contractors and, and uh, mechanicals who, who whose refrigerant that CRS is processing, correct? They can, That's correct. They can yes. Bonnie will actually uh, explain to them, uh, if it's good 22, they won't necessarily need to know. Mm -hmm. They'll basically know that it's coming in bang to them okay. uh, and back towards their company. Mm -hmm. If it's crossed, if it does show up something else in this test, another retention time, that it's not 99.5 or better, it will basically show that also and then she'll explain to the customer what it's crossed with and actually what they might have actually put in their tanks also instead of the 22 that they may have liked. Got it. So all this information is kept in that contractor's folder as that's well correct. for that job. That's yeah, great. That's okay. Correct. Now we got some other test equipment over here. Uh, maybe you can tell us what that is. Okay. Okay.